Hello, my podcast people, and thank you for joining me for yet another episode of my favorite podcast. If you're listening or watching on the day that it drops, it is Monday, August 12th. I hope August is treating you well. Today, we are talking soft suggestions for how to have a productive August or what's left of August. As per always, a few life updates, and then we will hop on into the teaching segment. So quite a, quite a few life updates. First off, I played in the Manhattan Beach six-man tournament last weekend, or last Friday. Um, honestly, twos is my shit. Uh, it was fun to be part of a team and, and watch as everyone showed up in the way that they showed up, and, and everyone was just so positive and good, and our captain, Stasha, like, she taught us how to play six man like six person aside it's very different than two people aside in those rotations it's the same as indoor i never played indoor my exposure to beach my first exposure to volleyball i mean i played a little bit in high school like in gym you know um but there's no rotations or anything like that um so my first exposure to actual organized volleyball was beach which is two on two very different than sixes um so that was that was fun it was good um you know, there's a lot of specialization within six men. You look, it's really positional. And so I actually ended up playing just basically defense all the time, which was fine. Um, I would have loved to have swung a bit more, but it just made sense the way that we were, we were doing it. And so, yes, I'll probably play next year just for the team. Um, it's a long ass day. It was a long ass day. Uh, I left the house at eight o'clock in the morning. I got home at nine 30 at night. So it was long or we should, we got home at Lex was there the whole time. Lex could not play, uh, because this was the master's division. Lex is a baby. Um, so I'm 39. What of an age difference here? Lex is 31 and Masters is 35 and up. So she was not old enough for the team, um, but she was there cheering us on every minute, of the, every literally every minute of the day. So that was last, you know, whatever, how many Fridays ago. Uh, speaking of Lex, we are just finally getting around to putting up wall art and we are about to hit one year in this place. Um, obviously, I have all the stuff up in this office and, and that mattered to me as, you know, relates to the backdrop for, you know, these shots. Uh, but... I don't really care about that other stuff in the rest of the house. So we are finally getting around to doing that and getting artwork and putting that up. So maybe, maybe then I'll do that tour that I never did on social media. We'll see. Uh, speaking of social media, I had a reel go viral, at least viral for me. Um, I have never had something go viral in my 10 years of being on social media. I, I'm not like craving it. I, I think that largely most of the things that I've seen when they go viral, I'm like, I don't want that. Um, but... It went viral. Like I said, for me, as last I checked, it was over 125,000 views. It had 6,000 plus likes, 300 plus comments. That's what I was looking at. That's the good stuff to me. 300 plus comments. I have had like about over 300 followers, new followers from it. Um, so that's cool. The post was actually about Simone Biles and it took me like literally a few minutes to make it. It's a green screen. And I was just mentioning the fact that, hey, I see PTs out there that are talking about her anterior pelvic tilt or, you know, whether she has one and her flat feet. And they're talking about it in a good way and being like, hey, look, she has this, like, you don't need to bastardize these kinds of things. And like, obviously, like, I don't even want people talking about her body at all. But uh, I chimed in just being like, hey, the thing that no one's saying is that these features are highly characteristic of black people. And so it's not that she has a beneficial deviation from the norm. It's that this is her norm. And the fact that we are seeing more diversity in the Olympics means that we're seeing by well we're seeing body diversity which means we're seeing movement diversity and that was my whole point and you know everyone was actually super positive the comment section is really good um and i should say it's really positive it was also some you know sad things where people were just like yeah this is my experience and basically you know gymnastics obviously it, she's a gymnast and so i was just talking about movement in general um, but a bunch of gymnasts and dancers and things chimed in. And they were just like, yeah, this is my experience. Even as a white woman, this was my experience because I'm not like, you know, a white skinny woman or whatever the standard was. And I was like, yeah, you are correct. So it has brought followers in. We'll see if they stay um, because it was not out Instagram or, you know, online business. But I don't know. We will see what happens with that. But I, when I went to post it, I was actually thinking, I'm like, this could, it, it's ripe for doing well, right? It's what we call trend jacking. So, you know, the Olympics is trending, racial stuff is trending. Um, we know that racial stuff can be very inflammatory sometimes. And, you know, if it bleeds, it leads. So social media loves to push that kind of stuff. Um, it was done all in the Instagram app and in, inside of Reels. It was short, not super short though. Um, but yeah, like, I, I'm not surprised that it went. I shout out to Anna and Hartman. I know she's not listening to this, but shout out to Anna. Um, Cause I went and I went and I was like, Anna, can I just complain to you for a second? And she was like, always. And I was just like, yo, I'm seeing these fucking posts and good for these people talking about whatever, you know, let's not bastardize 
um, you know, how pe- certain body types and, and anterior pelvic tilt and flat feet and things like this. I was like, but they're missing the point that like, it's because she's black and like, this is not a deviation from the norm that is beneficial. It, this is her norm. And she was like, yeah, you should definitely do a post about that. So I did it and went viral and, um, yeah, so that, that's what happened then. Uh, speaking of the Olympics, look at these good segues today. Speaking of the Olympics, um, just out here getting my heart broken. Really the only ones that I really watch is, is beach volleyball. And it's interesting cause I watch beach volleyball all year. So, uh, the teams are not surprising. I've seen them. I've seen most of them play. There's a few that I haven't China, never seen them play. And I was really, really impressed with them on the women's side, Cuba on the men's side. I think I love them now. I'm like, wow, amazing. But my girls, Taryn and Kristen team TKN, they lost in the round of 16 and they lost to Brandy Melissa out of Canada this is a match that we see quite often. We see it on the AVP tour. We see it in the FIVB uh, tournaments. And I honestly thought that as soon as I saw this Dutch draw, I was just like, fuck. Mainly because, I, you know, volleyball is such a mental sport. And I was just like, that could go either way. Um, I think a lot of people were really upset just because that's such a high level game that you would not expect to see it in the round of 16. And the only reason that it happened so early was because Brandy and Melissa played like shit for the pool play and then had an extra game that they played called Lucky Loser, um, and they won that game and then got seated against uh, TK, Team TKN. And just, I, it's really heartbreaking to me. I think that there's, yes, a good team's going to f- figure out a way to play, excuse me, figure out a way to win, irrespective of, of anything, um, but you just want to see those higher-level games happening later on. And I don't love the way that the... I know if you listen to this and you don't, you don't follow, you're like, I don't fucking care. But maybe you do because I'm passionate about it. But either way, I'm going to talk about it. Um, I don't love that the uh, lucky loser basically creates a double elimination situation for people out of pool play, right? They can lose, go over to the lucky loser bracket, win, and then get to move forward. Whereas everyone else that was great during pool play came out undefeated, right? TKN, they have her 3-0. and This is their first loss and they're done. And so uh, I thought that was pretty shitty. Um, I could probably say the same thing for the, for the men's side and with that Cuban team. They're just, I'm really excited to keep watching them and then keep an eye out for them because they played uh, Sweden, which is the number one seed. They took them to three sets. It was a phenomenal game, super physical game, um, as physical as volleyball can be. If you know volleyball, you understand what I'm saying. It wasn't like physical touching each other. Um, but it was really good. Um, that was really good. I'm, I'm, ups- I'm sad for TKN, but they're young, so they'll be back. And yeah, Olympics out here breaking my heart. Um, the other side of the Olympics that's just like, what the fuck is going on is, let's call it, we will call it transvestigating, right? When it comes to women's sports, why, are, why what the fuck? Like, why are we, what is happening, right? We have come so far. And you know, my post goes viral about body diversity and just diversity within the Olympics. But then we also see in the same breath all of the racism and misogyny that's going on. And basically any woman that wins, unless she's white and frail and small and weak, they're immediately like, she's a man. And I'm like, oh my God, get a fucking life. Get a fucking life. I Just get a fucking life. Um, I know I saw a thread that basically says something along the, lines of, along the lines of, we live in a time where we have access, you know, the most access to info and we do the least amount of research. And I'm like, yeah, yeah. Yeah. If it bleeds, it leads, folks. We know. So all this inflammatory shit's going to go up. Do your homework, friends, please. Do your homework first. All right, let's jump into this teaching thing. I'm looking at the time. We are nine minutes into this, and I'm just yapping about the life updates in the Olympics. So let's get into this. So today we're talking about some soft suggestions for having a productive August. August is a time of transition. Right. In the northern hemisphere, we are going from summer into fall. And in the summer, in the, excuse me, in the southern hemisphere, we are going from, they're going from winter to spring. The great part about this is it, it is a two-part season, right? We are leaving one thing and entering another. So there's two parts of that, the leaving, the departure, and the entering. My suggestion is to lean into both, right? Yes, I stay preaching and teaching that focus is a superpower, but rest and preparation are both key components for, for success, right? And so my suggestion is to use August for both of those, for the rest and the preparation for what's to come next. So in terms of rest, right, lean into the last bits of the season, whatever season that is for you. In my opinion, I think this is most easily understood in terms of summer, right? Some folks are starting school already, and I'm like, oh, wow, aggressive. Um, but that doesn't mean that there's still some summer activities, right? There's still beach days, pool days, barbecue days. It's still, it's still warm. 
Um, those are still ahead. So my suggestion, say yes to those things. I, I actually played volleyball this morning, uh, which I don't usually do because I'm like, hey, it's morning. The sun is up early enough. It's not cold. It's actually very humid. Um, I'm going to say yes because those days are going to go away and then it's going to be winter time. And I'm going to be like, this sucks. Right? The rest allows for the work. Understand that. We know that all of you, all of you in the movement space, you understand that the rest allows for the work. So say yes to those things. Uh, if you are in the Southern Hemisphere, maybe that's whatever cold shit y'all do. You want to go skiing. You want to build a fire. I don't really know because I don't like that season. But there is this hibernation, you know, nature to it. Lean into that because that rest is what's going to allow for the work. In terms of preparation, right? Because we said two things to lean into, which is going to be the rest and the preparation of August. The preparation side, we want to think about what are your plans for the fall slash spring, right? So we're going into uh, spring, you know, for the Southern Hemisphere and we're going into the fall for the Northern Hemisphere. What are you doing? These are great times to be doing things, right? Because people are like emerging and then doing things, right? Those are when we're looking at a calendar, a full calendar, we want to think about those like two main times on the, on the year when we're going to be launching. So usually it's kind of like March and this kind of September, October-ish. So what are we what are you doing? Are we launching something? We're running something? The 30,000 foot view of this and how to prepare is to take, go back, look at a calendar, go back one month from the time that you want that thing to start, right? The start date of whatever it is you're launching and then start ramping up promotions, right? So if you're like, I want this thing to start on September 3rd. Well, if we go back a month, that's August 3rd, which is before this thing, this, this podcast episode comes out. So like, you got to be on it now. We got to be talking about it. We got to be emailing people, um, emailing your list, whatever your um, anticipation phase or your excitement phase looks like, which is super important, right? What are you doing before this to bring awareness to this, this offer, this launch that you're doing? That needs to start now. Realistically, the success of any launch is determined by what you're doing six plus months before that launch. But at a minimum, please, let's give yourself at least one month. I call it the magic month. Right? Alliteration is very nice. Remembering things. Let's get at least one month of promotion, anticipation, excitement, you know, building up before that actual running of that thing. Right? So if you're doing any September launches, promo time should be starting now. Um, this means that the content starts to shift so that it's about whatever it is that you are going to be launching. Of note, I personally am not a big fan of early September launches just because like people have a lot of shit to do. Uh, you know, we have the, ho I'm looking at the calendar over there, you can't see it, but we have the holiday right at the beginning of the month. People are transitioning, going back to school. Yes, I know some people are already at school, but if we're looking in general, we get more people will be back in school and parents will be like back into routines by mid and late September, which is when I like to do things. I'm a fan of launching in late September um, or early October. Right? Another good transition here. I'm going to be running round 16 of my Instagram intensive this either end of September or October. I actually haven't decided the date. Um, for those of you who don't know the intensive, the Instagram intensive is my six week online group coaching program that teaches health and fitness pros exactly how to use Instagram for online business. Folks in the wait list, they get early access to registration because I do cap it at 50 people and they get $100 off of the uh, full retail price. So we will link that in the show notes. It's the full page, has all the information on it. Um, all of the calls that we do live are on Tuesdays. You don't have to attend live. You can absolutely watch the recordings. Um, but feel free, go to that link, add your name to the wait list, and then you will be receiving some emails shortly. All right, so back to August. Uh, the long and the short is let's use this to, let's use it as a ramp up time so that you can hit the ground running in September and have success in whatever business endeavor it is that you, you know, you're looking for, All right? You got to give yourself at least folks, please, at least that magic month of promotion time. So let's start reverse engineering things right now. And don't be like, Oh, I want to start on September 3rd. Well, it's like, that's not enough, not enough time. Right? We, we understand, think about how Apple does things. What does that promotion time look like? What does that lead up, that ramp up time look like? The bigger the runway, the bigger the plane, right? The longer the runway, the bigger the plane. Um, so I totally almost had a tangent there and I was just looking at, I saw a thing yesterday about the hydraulic like rope thing that stops the jet planes, the jet fight, the fighter planes. It costs like $150 million because it stops them like so short from taking off. But either way, either way, those planes aren't as big as like, you know, a big like, you know, Air Force One, something like that. But either way, understand let's reverse engineer those dates now you want to launch something in september okay cool let's go back a month from that at least a month 
right? So we pick a start date. Hey, I want to start on September 23rd. Okay, let's go back a month from that. That's going to take us to August 23rd. From there, I would actually like you to add on another two weeks because I want you to include the actual launch, right? So realistically what you're looking at, I should probably do an episode on this, but we're going to do a little mini launch tutorial right now. When you're going to start something, the week before you start it, that's going to be your public launch, meaning you're selling to everybody and anybody. The week before that is when I like to sell to the wait list. I have two part for my launch. If you're going to do a, what I call a hard style, hard style launch where you're selling to a, a lead magnet, that would happen before the public launch. So it would be public launch happens. Uh, the week before that would be your lead magnet launch. And the week before that would be, or time before that, some time period before that would be your waitlist launch. I don't use timely lead magnets to sell. I don't do challenges and things like that to sell into stuff um, or webinars or anything like that. Um, so I only have those two weeks that I'm selling and it's actually just 10 days. It's Monday through Friday and then Monday through Friday. So I have the start date, which is a Tuesday. I'm going to go back the week before. That's going to be the public launch. The week before that's going to be the waitlist launch. And then I add a month on to that. So it ends up being about six weeks. Um, but the MM magic month is that, that alliteration helps people remember it. So at a minimum, let's get that magic month of promo time. So use this August to rest, lean into whatever the last of that, you know, good bits of the season is. And then let's look at the calendar. Think about when we're launching, reverse engineering those dates. And this way we can hit the ground rolling. Well, okay. I'm looking at this. Do I have anything else I want to say? Uh, no. That's it. Y'all know I love me some seasonality. We are in a season of transition. So let's lean into that transition. All right. All right. That's all I got for you. As always, endlessly, endlessly, endlessly appreciative for every single one of you. Until next time, friends. Maestro out.